Hey everybody, this is Dave. We are trying something new. It's called Dental Chat with Dave, very original. Uh, it's unedited content on some current events. So very uh, recent information. So today is July 27th, 2022. The Fed has just raised rates and we wanted to get some content out there on what this means to you as a dental practice buyer or seller. We had a lot of questions on this, thought it'd be easier to and maybe more more helpful to make a video covering a few of these uh, hot topics, current current events as it relates to rates, the Fed raising rates. Um, so as we can see here, uh, the Fed raised the benchmark rate uh, by 75 basis points to a range of 2.25 percent to 2.5 percent. So it's important to know that the that the Fed only has control over certain short term rates and. This is really an interesting time frame to look at this um, because they are controlling a rate that's 2.25, 2.5%. And then if we look at the two year treasury, so this is more of a market um, dictated rate, the same as the 10 year, these are market driven rates. So the Fed does not have necessarily direct control on these rates. These are set by the market. And what's interesting is that the two year rate, so you can get a higher effective yield rate on a two-year 2.98 percent rather than a 10-year 2.7 percent so let's take this back to maybe let's go look at like six months here or year to date um maybe even one year is more is a better a better graph for us to look at so rates the 10-year rate has come up in the last year this rate is important for you as a practice buyer or seller, especially if you're transacting in the owner user space, because a lot of banks, you know, price off of this. And by the way, I'm not a CPA. I'm not an account. I'm not an economist. I, I'm, a, I'm a dental practice broker here at Menlo with some banking experience. So I'm speaking from my experience in the marketplace. There's a lot of factors that go into this and a lot of, a lot of things can change tomorrow. So that's why I thought it was important to state the date. Um, uh, because I don't know what the future holds, uh, but what I can show you are some interesting things that have taken place in history. And so this this rate right here, this is really interesting. Um, you know, usually you're going to pay for a practice. Uh, if you're buying a practice, you're going to pay this rate plus some markup that the bank has. Right. They usually use this as some form of a benchmark to price their loans. So the market has said, OK, you know, we topped out. We peaked out here in, in June. And, and we've pulled back a little bit, 2.7. So usually when this rate is down, that, that indicates some, maybe a little bit of fear in the economy or some uncertainty. As the rate gets higher, that indicates strength. So it's really interesting that we had a peak and now we've come back. And But the overall trend is increasing. So if you're a practice buyer, you might look at this and think, okay, is this a good time or a bad time? You know, relatively speaking, as a practice buyer, you know, we don't know where this rate's going to go, but the trend is still overall up, even though we've come down. So, you know, this historically speaking, let's go back to the all time chart here on the 10 year. This is the 10 year Treasury. I think that's important to to keep keep aware of. So this chart has come down significantly since the early 80s and it's taken decades to get there. So when you look at it here, we're still in a relatively very low borrowing environment as a buyer. So this being that we have 10 year most practice loans if as an owner user they're going to be 10 year loans sometimes 15 a couple of cases but but in a lot of instances you're going to be borrowing on a 10 year amortization so this little increase even though you didn't catch the bottom right even though you may not have borrowed right down in here in this in this trough there is the, the practice is the affordability of a practice hasn't really changed a whole lot because of uh you know this move in rates and relatively speaking kind of want to put this in perspective we had a high inflationary period in the 70s and 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 rates had to go way up for that to come under control and it took a really long time i mean decades here look at this from the 80s to the 2000 took decades for this to kind of get to where it is so in the history of rates not a big deal for real estate investors for home buyers these are much longer and tend to be in some cases, especially in investment properties, really large loans. And but the biggest deal is longer term amortizations, 20, 30 years. So those amortizations, short term borrowing rates, those amortizations, I mean, these things are highly affected by a change in rates. 
if everybody had, you know was accustomed to borrowing down here and all of a sudden we're borrowing up here and on, on such a long amortization you pay a lot more interest up front it makes a big difference for for those uh aspects of the marketplace but for a dental practice buyer uh, the affordability of the practice really hasn't changed yes your interest expense you know compared to down here to right here your interest expense will go up but relative to where we are historically speaking we could probably afford to see a fairly sizable increase in rates um even from where we are right now, um, before anybody is really seriously priced out of a practice because of the increase in interest rates alone. So um, now, does this mean that, you know, th there's a lot of other factors. Are banks willing to lend? Banks are sitting on a lot of cash right now. So, you know, if they're not, um, you know, if, if, they, if they're of a really healthy balance sheet, they may be willing to do some uh, pricing exceptions that, that kind of deviate from the norm. But if we're priced at 10-year treasury plus some markup, you know, right now, not a bad time to buy, uh, and we can still afford a, a, a decent uh, uptake in rates. Obviously, if we get up here in that 15% range on a 10-year treasury, that's what we're looking at here, 10-year treasury, that's potentially problematic. That's going to price some people out. But, um, you know, this where we, the move we've had right now, if I were a buyer, I wouldn't hesitate to buy a practice. It's your livelihood. It's, it's, your, it's your future. If that's something that you want to, if that's a goal that you have to buy a practice, I wouldn't let this, this move deter you. And you're probably... Historically speaking, you're probably better off uh, if we go back to the year that you, you know, you're probably better off locking something sooner rather than later, rather than catching the all time low. So uh, this inversion here, this is called inverted yield curve. The 2.9, this is the two year again. So we're looking at two year treasury 2.976. This is indicate indicative of a, you know, some people say it's a recession warning, right, where the two year you're getting a higher yield on the two year versus the 10 year. The markets today have rallied big time because of this right here. It said the Fed could slow the pace of rate hikes. So it's kind of this weird dynamic where the Fed say they could slow the pace of rate hikes and the stock market is rallying. Oftentimes, you know, what happens in the stock market is the opposite of what you think. But what that is, what that means is that the Fed is seeing prices, you know, they indicate in some of their comments, they're seeing you know, some of these commodity markets come down, right? If you look at used car prices and, and lumber and even oil has come down, you know, there's a lot of softening in the economy. Again, not my forte. I just see these things from the periphery. Um, you know, they, they've indicated us some softening. And so those things might cause them to to slow the pace of rate hikes. So that's why the, the equity markets are so excited. That's why they're rallying. Um, and, and dental practices historically have been pretty resilient in those times. So again, if you're a buyer, I would not, uh, wouldn't hesitate to make a move on a practice. And if you're a seller, there is some uncertainty uh, for, for sellers in this time frame. You know, if, if, we, if rates do continue to increase, um, then sure, that can, that can you know, cause a problem. And so we're in a sweet spot. Um, now is a good time to, to make a move either on, on, on really either side of the transaction. I'd love to answer any questions. Feel free to reach out, david at menlotransitions.com. And uh, we've got lots of resources on our website as well. Be happy to help. Uh, contact us anytime.